Hello, I'm Catherine. Welcome to the studio. I had a bit of a sort out yesterday and while everything was looking reasonably tidy, I thought I'd do a uh, very small, very short, because it's not a very big room, studio tour. Um, and the fact that it's not a very big room means that I've had to come up with some um, storage solutions and I thought some of you might find that useful. So let me show you round. Um, I'm not very good at estimating sizes or working them out. I guess it's about four metres across that way and maybe four and a half metres long. Um, it was a tiny dining room when we moved in because you can see there's a hatch there that goes to the kitchen. But um, we don't have many dinner parties. I'm very lucky to have this as a dedicated room. Um, it has a south facing window, which isn't the best for a studio. Um, in a classic, turn you around. a classic um, studio has a north window because you get the most constant light. But that's if you're, you know, a fine art painter, which isn't what I do. So the only thing is, because it's south facing, it can get a bit too sunny um, which is not very good for filming but that's that's kind of the only big issue but I do get nice light here and I put all these dried flowers and seed heads into these big jars and I quite like the way the light goes through them and I've got this lovely big windowsill because this is the oldest part of the house that's got really thick walls as you can see and apparently that was originally a door anyway I'll stop waffling on because, because that was a door, it was this narrow space here and I used to have a set of drawers on runners and it was a really old Ikea one I think and it started falling apart so I chucked that out. I kept the baskets because they're really useful, I'll get to that in a minute. And then when I sort of kitted out the room I got two plan chests. Plan chests are, what's good about them is that they're very deep so they're quite shallow but they go very deep so it was ideal for this space um, you know it looks like it was made for it doesn't it you can I'll put a link to where I got these from because they came in all sorts of different um, combinations of size and drawers and everything that's actually two lots of three on top of each other so I can fit a lot in there on the top I've got this is part of my one of my sewing machines it's an embroidery unit so you can it's all digitized and you can program it and it does embroidery for you this is quite an unusual machine called a thermofax machine and what this does is you you can sort of make your own silk screens I'll talk about that another time but I don't use it very often so I like to keep it out of the way I need to have some sort of dust cover over here. I did just have a bit of bubble wrap, but it looked a bit horrible. So I'm going to come up with another solution. And I keep, I have different things in different drawers. So I've got all my sort of pens, inks, and miscellaneous tools, pencils in that one, um, inks, and a big pot of gesso, white and black. I do a mixture of textile art and mixed media, so I do have quite a lot of stuff. These are what I make with the Thermofax. Actually, that was a that was one I bought. That was a proprietary one when I was first starting to find about find find out about it. And these are ones that I do myself. What it does is it burns a hole sort of through mesh, but you've got a you've got two layers. So one layer gets burned and the other layer is left there. So you can use it um, sort of like a stencil. And um, it's lots of fun, although a little bit um, trying to get it to work properly. So I don't know if you can see that one. That one's a butterfly. Um, and that's the stuff that you make it from, which apparently they don't make anymore. So at some point it's gonna become um, surplus but I've got lots of that for now and here I keep a lot of my papers these are mixtures of things and I try and categorize them so when I need to start a project I can find them quite easily right, I can sit down um, I try and keep everything labeled I mean this is 
This is best practice and I don't keep to it by any means. It's just because I've had a sort out, it looks fairly ordered. So for instance, that's my biggest lot. That says painted. So this is anything I've inked on or painted. If I've got leftover paint on a roller, I sometimes just kind of do it on a spare piece of paper. You know, it's a bit boring, but it might be a good background for something. So I've got lots of things like that plus usually anything that's too big to fit anywhere else and um, all kids studies I did um, and these are all things that I, I can reuse for other projects so in here I've also got um, actually if you saw my last video which was about making a blank book and tearing out some of the pages these were some of the pages I tore out because in that case I actually painted first I might reuse those in another project so so I do tend to keep stuff small miscellaneous so lots of sort of interesting bits and bobs I might use I won't go through everything um, but you get the idea and I keep everything in these plastic sleeves inkjet laser I've got um, transparent things I've got um, gel print uh, prints and also sort of sometimes with with transfers you make a rubbing and then you use it for a gel print so some of the things are sort of halfway through um, but you can see how much fits into these long drawers so it keeps it nice and tidy as long as I do tidy up and I have got a few just kind of random things as well because that's what life's like isn't it <laughs> um, and then further down here I've got, this is why I keep paints, although I've got a lot of them out at the moment, so um, as you can see I've got a whole, a whole tray of acrylic paints because I've been doing a lot of printing recently. Um, these are nearly all acrylic, apart from some silk screen which go directly on fabric. You can use acrylic on fabric, the only thing is if you use it neat it can stiffen the surface so you, if it doesn't matter, fine, sometimes I use a fabric medium which softens that down. And then I think this is more sewing stuff, I've got various, those are all the sort of interfacings and stabilisers I use with the embroidery machine and um, these are the frames, the hoops. Um, so those stay out the way and then I've also got a large plan chest so this is more like a conventional one because they were for architects they started with really um, because you know you can fit a whole um, you know those big documents they have for building plans you can fit them in and I've got a lot of things in here I'll start from the bottom at the bottom I've got a mixture of things it's mostly sort of paper stuff frames and things that are sort of too big to fit anywhere else so it's slightly random but I keep a lot of large pieces of card and large pieces of paper there both blank and that have been used already mostly blank these are all fabrics that I've dyed myself pretty much although there are a few things um, so these are my silks that I make the ribbons from and this is some um, uh, cotton I do a lot of low immersion dyeing and some of my signer prints cyanotype prints are in here as well so that's where I keep everything that I've modified in some way and then oh, you can fit a lot in but sometimes things get a bit stuck and then this drawer I've got um, commercial fabrics so I do a bit of dressmaking from time to time although I'm always more um, ambitious thinking oh yes I'll run up that I, I'm sort of attracted to the fabric I've got some lovely fabrics in here I should get around to making things um, it's hard to resist when you see lovely ones in a sale so those and also I was making a lot of masks during um, Covid times so I um, accumulated quite a lot of sort of random pattern things and then the top drawer is all pretty much crammed in um undyed fabric so i've got the silk bamboo silk that i use for my ribbons i've got linen i've got cotton i've got all sorts of things but it's all um unbleached usually i buy it it's called pfd prepared for dyeing some fabrics you have to do something called scouring um, sometimes you just you just need to wash them in case they've got some sort of finish so 
I've, it's, that fits a lot and then I've got a big cutting mat on the top here and this is such a nice big space and it's hard not to fill it up all the time but I did clear it up Let me just put this down I did um, as I said in my tidy up I've sorted a lot of things out and put them up on the shelves the shelves are fairly crammed but on here as well I also have a I've got various different ironing options. I've got a big ironing board on the back of the door. You can see that, I'll show that in a minute. I've got a medium ironing board, I've got a tiny ironing board, but before I had the sort of medium one, I just used a piece of fabric covered in, um, I don't know what they call, well, ironing board fabric, I suppose, um, which is quite a good option if you haven't, I, because, I used to do my art in part of the spare bedroom and all I had there was the top of a chest of drawers so I made that fit there and that was my ironing station. Um, and I don't use it so much anymore but it's kind of useful to have it. And then on these shelves over here I have a lot of stuff. On the bottom is all my sort of craft and art books. Um, I haven't bought so many recently mainly because I had bought so many I filled up that shelf and I've got quite a lot I, I did go through a phase of getting second-hand ones and seeing them on special offer but I've got things on dyeing and quilting and mixed media um, and things like that and also just sort of artists that I like like Fornicetti I love his stuff um, and then I've just got a lot of art materials a lot of sewing materials um, and some of my sketchbooks these are ones that I've um, pretty much filled and then I've got um, some blank ones here as in my last video um, waiting for things to be put in them so I mean they're not very deep shells but it's amazing how much I've managed to fit on them um, they're fairly well made and put up I think we actually had a joiner do that so um, because they've got quite a lot of weight with all those books and then I have what I suppose you'd call design boards which are basically just bits of foam that's used in insulation with felt over them so they make a perfect surface to pin things to um, it's a mixture of things that are finished like the pieces on this end are all finished piece, pieces some of them from quite a while ago um, and then I've got some that are halfway through this moth. I'm doing a series on moths. Um, that's had the background done, but I need to do more details. That's my washing machine in the background. And then some pieces of fabric that I haven't done anything with yet. I just like them, so I put them up. Um, some of the signer types and this piece that um, that was just left over from something else. It's got a little bit of botanical printing at the top there. And I just think it's very, I just love the colours of that and I like looking at it. This is something I did from an online workshop. Um, and then this is my big sewing table. And as you can see, it's set up at the moment. It's set up at the moment for free machine embroidery, which I do quite a lot. And it has... What makes it a sewing table is that it has a, an extra shelf that you use this lever here and that raises and lowers it and you have an inset and what that means is, is that free machine embroidery if you don't know is when you take up the feed dogs which are the bit that uh, pushes the fabric through and you use the needle almost like a pencil or a paintbrush but in order to do that you have to be able to move the fabric freely so when you've got a got it at the, you need to have it at the same height so this is perfect for that and I've also recently got this which is specially made to sort of grip the fabric and actually it's proven to be really good I'd never even heard of them before um, and it's a nice big size so what's good about this when I'm not doing sewing I can take all this out lever the other shelf up and then it just becomes a regular large table so that's really good space wise and then I've just got a regular table on this side um, and this 
is sort of quite narrow it just fits underneath that one so if I need more space there I can move it along and I've, I've got a bit more storage on that side but I did just I wanted to show you this is one of the baskets left over from the ones that I had there and what I tend to use these for is what whatever project I mean this is best practice I don't always do this but if I've got a project on and I'm getting lots of stuff out and the room's getting really messy I then put everything that I'm using for that project into this basket so I can do that I would say at the end of the day but that's not completely honest I'm just going to switch my machine I just it's just a good way of keeping some cut because I'm using my room for a lot of things I might be sewing um, I might be doing a quilt I might be doing a bit of dressmaking all those things require quite a lot of stuff so if I'm doing something in my sketchbook or on a panel and I've painted it or glued it and I need to dry it I can leave it on one side and then do some sewing or something else and it's just useful for tidiness to have somewhere to put everything um, and I, I had four, um, four of these mesh trays in the shelves and I've got one that's the equivalent of this that is for fabric which is under the table there um, and then the other two I've got one empty one one that's got all my silks in that I use for ribbons and then on this side I've got another one of these boards with felt over it um, what's useful about having these design boards is that you look at something differently when it's up on the wall and especially if that's where it's going to end up it's really useful to see it like that and you can stand back and you get a different sort of perspective on it so um, even if you can't find room to do that I've got like a oops, yeah you can just see that behind here I've got just a regular um, notice board and it's not as good because it's not as deep so you can't sort of stick proper pins in but that's a really good way of an easy way than putting up although I didn't put these up very sophisticatedly I think I just put um, screws in the wall and then made holes in the foam and stuck them over so it wasn't a difficult job I've got this cupboard um, which I had in this in my spare room for art materials and I brought it down here and about a year or so ago I kind of gave it a bit of a makeover with some Annie Sloan chalk paints and um, quite pleased with how it came out and just more stuff in here um, I've got some fabrics and things in small amounts and they're old projects um, you know I've kept everything together some more art materials down there papers in there this is why I keep all my sort of sprays spray cans and things um, you know things like temporary adhesive um, and then in, I've got a couple of drawers up here this one's full of odds and sods but this one this one's quite nice because I actually gave it a bit of a tidy the other day let me show you this one has a, has a lot of my threads and you might be able to tell but that's actually quite organized for me i had to they would got it got really messy so that was quite satisfying and then in this corner over here so here's another sort of way of fitting things into a not a very big room i've got one of these metal things that fits over the back of the door and i keep i use my iron not very long ago so it's out but i can keep the iron in there and the ironing board sits on these hooks this was a stand I made out of a few bits of wood um, where I show my ribbons and tends to get used for lots of things um, but it's like one of those sort of standing shelves I made it out of some wood I already had so I was quite pleased with that and uh, yes yeah, so I've got this notice board here um, and I've got this funny little cupboard um, that I just keep blank piece of paper plus sewing patterns I can't really keep paints and things because of the hot water from the tap so I've just got pads and um, spare blank paper random rubbish and sewing patterns on the third drawer down on the third shelf down so um, I've rambled on quite a bit oh, and we've also got our electricity <laughs> our electricity circuit board up in the corner but 
got boxed in quite nicely, doesn't it? Um, I hope that was either interesting or useful to some of you. Um, I'm quite pleased because it's it's a nice space. I've got a lot of stuff, an awful lot of stuff, but I've managed to store it away in a way that makes the room still look quite attractive, which I think is quite important when, you know, I'm in here an awful lot. If I'm not in the garden, I'm usually in here. Um, so do ask any questions if you're interested, and I hope you'll join me again soon, either back in the studio or in the garden.